Hi everybody, Jacob here. Welcome back to the Fashion Bunker. Boy, have I got a roller coaster ride for you guys today. So, listen very carefully. I will not repeat myself. We're going back in time for my top five fragrances for the month of February. 1921 is the year in which officially Chanel releases number five, the pure perfume created and conceived by Ernest Beau. Here I have the 15 milliliter bottle. Let me zoom in as close as I can. This one, the Badheimers will tell you, was released around 25 or 26, but that was the reformulated version, you see, that was toned down to 80-something ingredients. The original, which I unfortunately don't have, which was available only for a short period of time, had over 180 ingredients. And I love to wear my Chanel Number no. 5 also in my bag wherever I go. This little thing here, I'm putting it so you can see as good as possible, is not a lipstick. This is actually a perfume. You, you can take it out here. I have to refill it pretty soon. Now we're moving on to the year 1922. And 1922 sees the release of the pure perfume of Chanel Number no. 22. You can check out the reviews of all of these fragrances that you're about to see in the description box down below because I have done reviews of, of all of them. I love to wear the pure essence, the pure perfume in the evenings. Um, during the day, or let's say after 6 p.m. till 8, 9 p.m., before I start using the pure perfume, I go for the Eau de Toilette. The Eau de Toilette, which you can see here, is very dark. This one has been exposed to light quite a bit. It's turned this gold ambery color. This is going to be a roller coaster ride, I promised you. And here we go. This is um, a late 90s, early 2000s, but also used in the 80s, 50 milliliter bottle. This one is refillable uh, of number 22. And so I know my Chanel reformulations. Let's take this one out. You could see this one has been exposed less to light. And so it has more of a yellowy color. But this one is incredible in all its reformulations. I'm not so keen on the Eau de Parfum that Olivier created. Now we're moving on to 1924, when Chanel, again together with Ernest Beau, who also created number 22, when Chanel together with Ernest Beau created Queer de Russie, or Russian leather. Here I have the Pure Parfum, of Queer de Russie, still in production as a splash bottle perfume. You should definitely get it if you have a chance. This one is incredible. I also have it in the Eau de Toilette form. I don't have it in Eau de Parfum because I don't want it in Eau de Parfum. Well, not yet at least. Let's see what the future brings. This is the 200 milliliter Eau de Toilette bottle, which I also have um, Slightly older version. This one has been exposed to light. Look at this. This is They're both eau de toilette, but you could completely see the difference um, in light, in, in color of the liquid. This is because, thank the Lord, some of these liquids still have some natural ingredients that do react to light and heat. This one is more dense and intense after a while. This one is a bit more lighter. This one is a bit more hay uh, leather reminiscent. And this one is more smoky. And deep. Right before uh, these 200 milliliter bottles came out, this is what Chanel sold uh, to us. The Eau de Toilettes were available in 100 milliliter bottles. They were around 80 euro back then, 100 ml Eau de Toilette. And they had a printed uh, name of the perfume right up here. And a Chanel at the bottom. So I know how they've evolved throughout time. Moving on, we have 1925, the year in which Ernest Beau with Chanel releases Gardenia. Um, Gardenia, as I have here in the Eau de Toilette form, I love it very, very much. It's a really, really cool perfume. Like, it smells like perfume, even though it's not a parfum. This one also exists as an extract, but this is the Eau de Toilette. And um, I also have the 35 milliliter uh, Gardenia spray bottle released in limited quantities, mostly in the States. I think actually only in the States uh, because this 35 milliliter spray bottle uh, 
The glass itself, I'm not so sure, but the liquid inside is made in the U.S. of A, not in France. Very interesting. In fact, I sprayed it here before I began. It's slightly lighter than the European made in France version of Gardenia Eau de Toilette. Um, I have, this is the only Eau de Parfum from the reformulations. I also have Boy, but um, this is the only Eau de Parfum of the reformulations that I have purchased, uh, reformulated by Olivier Polge. This is Gardenia Eau de Parfum 200 ml. I'm finding ways of loving this one too, I have to say. This one is a bit more soapy, a little bit more exotic than the Eau de Toilette. The Eau de Toilette stays very classy all the way through till the end. This one stays fuzzy, but at the same time, juicy. And I'm finding ways of loving it, mostly spraying it on clothes and skin combined. So... Yes, I will be repurchasing Gardenia de Parfum, I have to admit. Now we're going to 1926. Bois des Îles. Bois des Îles is magical. This is the Eau de Toilette 200 uh, milliliter version spray bottle. And I love it. I also have it as a 75 ml bottle. Now, prior to... now. Queer de Russie, remember the bottles right before the re-release and addition of all the new Les Exclusives to the range of the 200 milliliters? Well, the bottles, the spray bottles also used to be 100 milliliter, but they used to look like this. This is a 90s and early 2000s, uh, actually also late 80s bottle of Bois des Îles. This is how they looked like. And this is a very, very concentrated juice in here. Aldehydes high a thousand. Incredible. So this is how the bottles used to look like. This is also good for you guys' as reference in case you, you want a Bois des Îles. The reviews of all of these fragrances, links are in the description box down below. Bois des Îles, I love to use this one, believe it or not, in the mornings. Also in the evenings, all day round. But in the morning, it gives me a feeling of woods sprayed with with freshness you know it, it, it's it's amazing and i managed to score this beauty here this is a tester sample not a sample a tester available only in the chanel boutiques uh to try out back in the day when they sold a lot of the pure perfumes this is the pure parfum of bois des îles look how they would take the number five 15 milliliter um container for the sprayer and then they would just put this bois des îles sticker on top and then they would come in these uh, Bois des Îles Chanel, Vaporisateur, Demonstration, No, No, Peut être Vendu, Not For Sale, 15 milliliter. This is the box it comes in. These are the five. But our time machine isn't over yet. We started with 1921. We went all the way up to 1926. You know I always break the rules. There is a sixth fragrance this month in February. And that is <laughs> the smell of the Chanel number no. five, the 255 reissue bag, the leather inside. Because the first Chanel 255 bag, as the name says, 255, it was released in February of 1955. And now we have February 2018. This is my favorite fragrance for the month of February 2018. The smell of the inside leather of the Chanel reissue 255 bag. It's intoxicating in the best way possible. And our journey through time ends in 2018. I am wearing something very symbolic. Coco Chanel has passed away in the early 70s. But Vivian Westwood, which is the last living legend, standing and living designer, still alive and producing her own brand, is what I'm wearing today. I'm wearing Vivian Westwood because, to me, it's an honor to have met and um, to be able to still admire pieces of a living legend. She's almost 77 as we speak and uh, still working. And the last living legend still there from the glorious time of fashion from the 80s and 90s until today. 
So I am trying to hunt down a vintage version of Boudoir, her fragrance, to review that as well sooner or later. And of course, I have Yoji Yamamoto Y3 on the top of my head because uh, Y3 does represent a very, very special... Uh, represent. It is a very special thing in my heart and in my life, but more about that perhaps in the future. So guys, thank you so much for watching. I hope you like this video. If you have, please do thumb it up. Let me know what you thought in the description box down below. And um, I have to say, life is too short to just live it by thinking about what not to do. <laughs> so just go for it, enjoy it, indulge, binge in what you love. Just use it to the point of, of intoxicating yourself to, to feel like that is your existence. That is what your purpose is on this earth, you know, to enjoy whatever your passion is and live that to the fullest. So if you haven't already, but do wish to, please consider subscribing to my channel here on YouTube. I'm also on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. No matter where the perfumes and the times and the travels take you, don't you ever give up on love. Love you guys. See you soon. Take care. Bye.